Hey Dragons not Affiliate, how did you all sleep? Special welcome to those that are new here. Today we're going to unbox the Odroid M1, which is the newest ARM-based PC, or I should say SBC, single board computer, made by Hardcore. And the reason why I started doing this one is because we have already a ARM-based server in our lab. It's just a simple Raspberry Pi 4. The problem is that it's only running on one gig of RAM and suddenly we have a lot more, you know, traffic. Of course, we do have the much bigger server, which I like to call the big guns. It's this one right here. Oh my fucking God, the thing is happy. This one. But as you can see, it's not running. And that's because Currently it's broken, that's one thing, but the other thing is it's taking way too much power and running this kind of stuff, you know, 24-7, especially if you don't need all of the energy or all of the computing power, it's kind of ridiculous. This thing pulls around 80 watt hours, while the Raspberry Pi 4 takes around 0 0.72 watt hours, which is more than 10 times less. So. This thing is actually only used currently when we run games or game servers during the time so that we can do the less heavy stuff, you know, like my website and some small Discord bots on this small server. But the problem is it's kind of thrown out of its proportion and now we need to figure out something else. So, because, yes, I can run this thing, but it takes a lot more power, which is a problem especially in recent times where energy costs have been rising through the roof so that's not a good idea and that's something that i want to address so this thing hopefully helps with that and yeah i think i can thank putin for having to do this but other than that we can figure out the cool gadget so because the odroid m1 has some really cool specs i wanted to go with the raspberry pi but due to chip shortage, that wasn't the option anymore. I don't know why Raspberry is you know, having problems with being in stock for so long, even after COVID. And companies like Hardkernel, which seems smaller than Raspberry Pi to me, they seem to have no problem at all. In fact, this thing was even cheaper than if I buy the Raspberry Pi with 8 gigs of RAM from some dodgy website where you can still get them. We're going to do an unscripted unboxing of a device where we have no idea what it's going to do. And if it's working well, we're going to transition from our Raspberry Pi server to this one, move all of the bots over. And it's an adventure where I take you with me. Here we go. Let's open her up. All right. So I've never opened this before. This is literally the first time. And boy, it's smaller than I expected. Actually, the whole package. This is interesting. They printed the packing receipt on a sticker. I think this is a very cool laptop sticker. There we go. Really, really cool. So we got the EU plug. At least I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And so this is the, the Odroid M1. We're going to get back to that later. We got, I think this is our charging brick. Or it's something else. Yeah, it's a brick. I'm curious where our EMMC RAM is now because... Oh, there it is. So this is our EMMC module. It's 64 gigs. And it's tiny as fuck. I wasn't aware that it was this tiny. But okay, that's our storage module. And this is our EMMC to USB loader. Which is also important. And yeah, let's get things going. By getting the barrel connector, which is this thing to actually power the Odroid. Um, presumably this thing is preloaded with Android. Oh, this thing is expensive, but let's not drop that. All right, let's see where this goes. There we go. Now let's get to the real peculiarity. That's this thing. 
So it's got a few QR codes for the wiki, the forum. Oh boy, here we go. This is the real deal. It's a lot bigger than the Raspberry Pi. Oh, you get fidget toys with it. That's awesome. Holy freaking moly. This whole thing is a heatsink. Yeah, that is super weird to look at. So here we have it. The front. Which has a slot for the battery. We got... I think we have... Here is the M.2 slot. We got the display port. Boy, here is the EMMC slot. And we got here the SATA port. Yes, holy fuck, we got actual SATA on this. An IR port for actual infrared remote stuff. <laughs> All of the magic happens underneath this thing. And this is why this one is pretty interesting. The downside is that it's not as community supported as Raspberry. Why is there a screw here? God damn it. Did something fall off? I mean... Oh god! Yeah, there was... What? Are you kidding me? There... The... I said I liked it, now it's already starting to fall apart. There's two screws that just got off. There's two screws that just... Gone. No. Are you kidding me? It's... Oh no. It's already starting to fall apart and I haven't even opened it yet. Oh no. Let alone turn on. I haven't even turned it on yet. Yeah, it, it's a screw from this thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. This is... Oh, this is beyond horrible. We're just gonna screw that together before we move on. I don't know if it's important. I mean, it wasn't that expensive. It was like 150 euros, but still. Okay, I think it's stuck again. I, I guess it sort of lost its contact during transmission it also seems like the, the the pcb is a bit bent on this area it wouldn't surprise me it just broke off but whatever so now that that is all is done next thing will be to boot it up i asked specifically to have this emmc slot to be flashed with android it has some upsides and downsides versus normal ssds and sd cards so you can see it right here, it's super tiny compared to what you're used to. The upside of EMMC is that it has its own controller. SD cards don't have their own controller, which means that the CPU is responsible for what you put on your flash drive and what you read back from it. This is okay, but it means that if your CPU is busy, it will be slower reading SD cards. Anyway, so EMMC has its own controller, which means that it's offloaded from the CPU, which gives you a bit more speed, All right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, th I think I got it. Okay. All right, so let's hook up the power and see how it goes. All right, three, two, one. Okay, it's using a little bit more power than Raspberry. The Raspberry used 0 0.72. This one is using 1.50. So far, it's just giant disobedient tool. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't really care anyway, because I didn't want to run Android anyway, but it was a good testing slash start point. We're just flashing the drive. But this time with Ubuntu and this was an official image from Odroid. So the reason why I'm doing this right now is I am assuming that Odroid or Hot Kernel or the web shop where I bought this from has given me a wrong image. And now by flashing it from the official Odroid website, I hope to kind of go around that and see what happens. So right now it's flashing. It's probably going to take a while, but it's faster than I expected. It's pretty speedy. So overall, I like it. Raspberry is quite community supported and they have a lot more stuff going on than these guys do i can imagine that community support was a little bit bad it's cool that there is a machine learning chip on this i did not expect that the arm processor is fast there's a lot of ram on it but yeah if you cannot use it there's little use for that but i think we'll get it to work it just takes a little bit more time than normally because with raspberry pi you like you plug it in and you go that's it but this thing has a lot more you don't just be able to plug in an SD card. You can also plug in like a full M.2 slot. Like, holy shit. You can plug in an SD card if you want. Oh, I think our image is done. Okay, this thing is ridiculously fast. It's done already. Four gigabytes. Like, holy shit. <gasps> it's working! 
Gonna get the boon to baby, gonna get the boon to baby. Of course, that's not what I want on it, but hey, it's pretty cool. I don't know how long the boot time is for this thing, though. Oh, 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 something is happening. Odroid? Okay, um, password was also Odroid, so... Odroid, really secure. Okay, well, the boot was a bit slow, but the login is pretty fast, so there's no Wi-Fi on this thing, by the way. That's another downside of this thing. I mean, it's not an expensive board. It got MPU, it got everything you might imagine in something like this. They got a safe somewhere, and they chose to not include Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But they do sell a uh, module that will add it to it, so if you want it, you can get it. It just costs extra. I'm not paying for it because I only need Wi-Fi and I got it right here. So it's just a tiny an antenna slash adapter. Okay, we did it. We're in. So far, I didn't find it too fast, really. I'm just curious how fast it would boot now if I just close it off and boot it up again. All right, I think we have seen enough. I love it, sort of. I mean, love it, hate it, kind of both. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of more to discover about this board, but I don't. I feel like streaming that long will be a bit odd and will also block all the things that I want to try to do. I think for a good first time discovery, we have figured out a lot of things about the sport. It can do a lot, a lot that we even didn't show yet. Uh, apparently there's an NPU on it, which means neural processing unit, which means this thing can run hardware accelerated AI. There is, of course, the fact that we want to boot NixOS on this, which hasn't worked out yet. I'll figure this out after the stream. We managed to boot Ubuntu on it. The Android EMMC that came with it didn't boot sadly so we flashed it with ubuntu that did boot a bit slow but i think it will get faster in the future remember this thing is really new this thing exists only for a few months it might be that it's just slow because of the fresh implementation it will probably get better it wasn't really good when i unboxed it as you could see it was like a screw missing and it just fell apart while i, while I grabbed it it wasn't really feeling that good but after i screwed it back together it was pretty pretty tough i love this heat sink it's basically a passive heat sink which means that it cools on its own there's no fans needed which is pretty nice compared to the Raspberry Pi 4. Next things I'm going to try to do is boot up NixOS and install my server software again and that will be my first try on actually using this thing in the real world. I'm really happy with it and I will definitely post some more videos or streams about this peculiarity because this thing is really interesting. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you're going to bed of course and you need drag is not a peculiarity and I hope to see you next time.